You found it. Your home for the best content on your favorite team, the Fighting Tigers of LSU. Do us a favor. Subscribe to the channel. Leave your comments below. Be sure to smash that like button. When Brian Kelly was opening up spring football at LSU and he had his pre-spring press conference, uh, I, I got the mic one time and I was able to ask him a question. And I asked him when he looked at his roster post-bowl game and post-signing day, and they've added 17 mid-year enrollees, what positions did they think they were in, still in need of, of adding to? And uh, this is what Brian Kelly said just a few weeks ago. I think our depth situation at tight end is a concern of mine. Uh, I think that's that's an area that we need to continue to build on and, and not sure that it's a quick fix. I think it's something that we're still going to have to look at. And there may be some people that, that are on our roster that might have to change positions and play that position. We're going to have to address it one way or the other. So it's still a concern. There might be some... There might be some movement there in the transfer portal uh, after spring ball, but it is a concern. We're not done on the offensive line. That's still an area that we're um, actively involved in as well. So I would I would leave it at th those two those two areas in particular. That was in no way ambiguous. Uh, he said we have got to address tight end, be it in the transfer portal, moving guys on our roster. I mean, he was very clear. They are not done. Like they will add somebody somewhere at tight end we did talk about a Notre Dame transfer who ended up at Boston College and when you look at the transfer portal you're looking for options well you there might just be one within the division uh, that became available and that's um former five-star tight end Baylor Cup who started his career at Texas A&M the quick backstory here with Cup he was the number 16 overall prospect um in the class of 2018. So he goes to, he, he had offers from everybody. He, uh, George, Bama, Georgia, LSU, Notre Dame, Penn State, Texas, USC, of course. So Brian Kelly did recruit Baylor Cup when he was the coach at Texas A&M. So Baylor Cup is a, is a consensus five-star in the class of 2018. He signs with the Aggies uh, there in the 2019 spring game, had a big, big day, five catches, 88 yards, 31-yard touchdown in that game. Well, in fall camp before the 2019 season, he breaks his leg. He's done for the year. Uh, he rehabs. Fall camp the next year has a shoulder injury, season-ending surgery, done for the year. So he misses the 2019 and 2020 seasons. Again, this is a consensus five-star tight end prospect who missed his first two years because of injury. Comes back in 2021, played just 88 snaps this year, and of course you had a, a very talented tight end room in College Station. Jalen Weidermeyer is, a, is an NFL tight end, and it was just a log jam there that Cup had gotten mixed up. And then when you look at what's happened now, of course, Max Johnson's brother, Jake Johnson, who had been an LSU commit, flipped to Texas A&M after the coaching change. Well, Jake Johnson's a five-star, number one tight end in the country, who's an early enrollee going through, through um, drills right now. Max Wright's a former defensive end who's been working with the first team there as well this spring. They got uh, 2020 signee Blake Smith. I, I could go through more. Point is, they got a lot of bodies at tight end in College Station, and this former five-star had two season-ending injuries and just got caught in the shuffle of a log jam of talent while he was on the shelf rehabbing. So you're looking at a guy who physically kind of fits the bill who was a five-star tight end, who was recruited by Brian Kelly coming out of high school and might, and not might, is looking for a new new home as he is now you know, available through the transfer portal. And Brian Kelly said flatly he is going to have to address the tight end spot. Cup is 6'7", 245, so he is your prototypical tight end that can be attached, that can block, that can also catch the football, and be effective in the passing game as well. The bottom line is you don't have a better option. So maybe you wait to, and I'm not saying that Cup is the guy, but if you're Brian Kelly, he was in no way ambiguous, 
going to address tight end position, portal or elsewhere. Here's a guy in your division that's a former five-star that's looking for a spot. You're familiar with him from recruiting him in South Bend. That would make a lot of sense. Again, not done, but would make sense if um, if that's a guy that, that they would target. The other position Brian Kelly talked about there was offensive line. And there is some news because we told you about Tyler Steen in the past. So Tyler Steen is a Vanderbilt offensive line transfer. Uh, he started 30 games at Vanderbilt, and he started on both sides of the line. And he is graded out by 247 Sports in their transfer rankings with a 91. So this is the best available offensive line transfer right now in college football. Uh, he's down to Alabama, LSU, Virginia, and Kentucky, according to his father, uh, Darius Steen. Uh, and he said, he said he is net quote. He's narr- this is to, according to two four seven Sports. He's narrowed it down to Bama, LSU, Virginia, and Kentucky is hanging in there. So it sounds like it's Bama, LSU, Virginia. Virginia is interesting because Steen's young, younger brother Blake signed with the Cavaliers in February. So if the Steen brothers want to play together, it would be at UVA. But Steen has taken official visits to both LSU and was at Bama this past weekend. The decision is expected to come early next week, Monday or Tuesday. Again, that's according to Steen's father telling that directly to 247 Sports. Um, This is a guy that, and it's also worth noting, that LSU recently hired Corey Phillips uh, from NC State. He was a former Vanderbilt staffer who recruited Steen. And that was one of the reasons Steen was considering NC State. So he's now on the LSU staff. So there's some ties there. There's a lot of connective tissue. Um, If Tyler Steen picks LSU, he is a day one plug-and-play starter at one of your tackle spots. Maybe Cam Wire beats him out at left tackle and Steen starts at right. But either way, you're talking about a guy that has started 30 games in his career in the Southeastern Conference. He is immediately, like immediately the day he steps on campus, if you get him, your most experienced offensive lineman. Brian Kelly made it certain they're not done at offensive line. They're still looking for additions there, and this guy would make a ton of sense. So, yes, I'm telling you about two guys within the SEC, but two guys that one that was a highly coveted prospect that hasn't played a bunch, one that was not as highly rated a prospect but has played a ton and has made himself a very valuable prospect, both at positions of need that Brian Kelly talked about, both looking to make a decision pretty quickly. And on on Steen, his dad said, we'll know Monday or Tuesday what that transfer destination is going to be. Both Bama and LSU are going through spring football already, so it doesn't seem like that's something that's really going to make a difference as you're already into the semester. You'd be looking at a summer uh, in, you know, uh, enrollment there for, for Steen, it would seem. I know his dad had said prior that he wanted to get on campus sometime, unless if there's a mid-semester you know, enrollee uh, process or procedure that could happen. But these are two guys worth keeping an eye on and two that could be major additions for LSU at positions of gigantic need. Uh, LSU's got the spots, and that's two to keep an eye on as uh, as they inch closer here with um, the spring practice underway. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Please leave your comments. I love to interact, and be sure to hit the red subscribe button below.